Where, where have they laid it? Um, verse 38, Jesus once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Listen, he is concerned. He's involved. My goodness. Right now, and I, I even blow, you know, there's times that I've, uh, folks that I've gone to school with, there are times that, because here, here's what I believe about God. And they have a hard time with this. It, you know, because the Bible says in Genesis, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And, and I think sometimes people forget that God is still a creator. He is still a creator. He is still creating. The universe as we know it continues to expand and grow. There is new creation out there. There, there are new formations being made. He is the one that's behind all of that. He is concerned. He is involved. He is intimately and passionately involved with his creation, and that includes you. And, and more than, than anything else, he's involved with you. Jesus says in verse 25, I'm the resurrection and the life. How can he make that claim? How can Jesus make the claim that he's the resurrection? Any ideas? There's one way that he can make that claim that he's the resurrection. He died. He died. And he died because of you. He died because of me. The only way that he can say that he is the resurrection, and later he says that he's the firstborn of the resurrection, the only way that he can make that claim is because he died. The one who was sinless, the one who was perfect, died for us. Does that sound like a God who is not concerned and involved with his creation? Jesus is the guy that comforts when we understand that he really is. Quite frankly, he doesn't care if you drive a BMW, even if you want a BMW. He doesn't care what house you live in. He cares for your needs. Not more than that. He's a the God of comfort when we really understand that he's concerned. Thirdly, he's the God of comfort when we experience his compassion. John 11.35, Jesus wept. Shortest verse in the Bible. You can win some trivia contests with that. That information, but more than that, more than that, you can know that Jesus is truly the God of comfort because you understand he is compassionate. He wept. Why did he cry? Why did he weep? Because he saw Mary and Martha weeping. Because his friend Lazarus died. Why did he weep? Because he's concerned. He's compassionate. That's the Jesus that is described in the scripture. Rick preached about that last week. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. You know that that's really true. The shepherds through the ages have laid their lives on the line to protect their sheep. A bunch of stupid animals. Jesus did the same thing for us. Um, three weeks ago, I, I, I reminded you of his compassion when the woman who was caught in the act of adultery was brought out, paraded in front of the city, paraded in front of those men who were accusing her. And Jesus' words went something like this, neither do I condemn you. And then of course, of course, we remember also that according to Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 8, that when we were still powerless, he died for us. Very rarely will a man lay down his life for another. Though sometimes a good man, according to Paul, will do that. But Jesus. 
Jesus will never be born again. Still him who is eternal for us. That's how much he loves us. That's his compassion. Jesus is a God of comfort when we realize that he's in control. Jesus is a God of comfort when we understand that he's concerned. Jesus is the God of comfort when we experience his compassion. And finally, Jesus is the God of comfort when we learn to commune with him. And that word commune really just means to live with him. To live with him. Our story has this really happy ending. You guys know the ending, right? I mean, we just kind of read through it, and I'll remind you. He raises Lazarus from the dead. I mean, I bet there was a party that happened after that. You know, party back at Lazarus' house. Now, chapter 12, chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Um, and, and we're concluding with this. This is the fourth heading, but it's also kind of a conclusion. It, it says that six days before the Passover, and this is the Passover where Jesus is going to be crucified, he's going to be delivered to his enemies. Six days before the Passover, Jesus arrived at Bethany where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here, a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. I imagine that, you know, there's that kind of thing that, um, Lord, thanks for raising Lazarus up. Can you come over for dinner? You know, it's one of those things. We really want to thank you for this, so let us, you know, make some chicken. You know, it wouldn't be pork, but the chicken would be. Um, so, so they invite him over. And a really interesting thing happens, it says in verse 3, that um, during this time that um, Mary actually brings out this expensive perfume, this uh, nard is what it's called, and she anoints Jesus with it. And most uh, scholars will tell you that that's because, you know, not that she knows this information, but God, again, using the circumstances, that what God is doing is preparing Jesus for his burial. He was being anointed by Mary. Could you imagine Jesus coming over? Jesus coming over the house. Here, here's what I pictured as I was thinking about this. There'd be ladies freaking out. Guys would be going in, cleaning the toilet bowls, making sure the soap. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we'd be picking stuff up, making sure stuff was put out of the way. Put the Bible out on the coffee table. You got your book. But, man, can you imagine if he was coming over? Here's the deal. And I, again, I think as Christians, we sometimes forget this. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, then He is with you all the time. All the time. Doris Wilson, we were visiting her this past week. And she said that she was up at Lipscomb, the hospital, getting ready for this knee replacement. And I don't know, was that a nurse? Was it a nurse or another patient? Another patient. That makes the story even better. This other patient kind of grumpy, you know, it says, she says to Doris, why are you in such a good mood all the time? And Doris said, because I have Jesus living in my heart. And I love Doris. I love some of the statements that she makes. And then she went on to say that. Because Jennifer said to her, you know, Doris, that is so true about you. That, you know, people run you. Know, they, there is no doubt that that is true. And Doris, and Doris goes, and she says this, she says, well, it is true. Um, everywhere I go, Jesus goes with me. And if there's a place that he shouldn't go, I don't go either. 